Welcome to Carols by Candlelight at St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Roanoke, Virginia. My name is Jacob Gordon, and I'm the music director here at St. Mark's. This is a milestone year for Carols by Candlelight, as it marks the 10th anniversary of the service. This is also the first Carols by Candlelight service with our new Moeller Walker pipe organ installed. And we had planned a special service this year to mark both events. Well, we've ended up with a special service, but not quite what we had in mind. Because we can't gather inside, we're offering this year's service online. The service features the elements that are the heart of Carols by Candlelight, lessons from scripture and the carols of the season, but they look a little different this year. The choir is virtual, the lessons were recorded at home, and Mask makes several appearances. The one thing that we can't recreate online is candlelight. Later in the service, we'll sing Silent Night together, when we traditionally light our candles in a darkened church, celebrating the birth of the light of the world. I invite you to have a candle nearby and to light it while we sing Silent Night. This year's celebration is different, and while we can't be physically gathered, we take comfort in knowing that God's Spirit gathers us together wherever we may be. So wherever you are, welcome. We're glad you're with us. Let us praise God together.
Beloved in Christ, during this season of Advent, let it be our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels, and in heart and mind to go even to Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Let us hear and receive the good news of the birth of Christ, and offer to God our thanksgiving in the joyful singing of carols. As we gather in the name of Christ, we pray for the world he came to save. For the church, that it may be enabled in our generation to surrender anew to God's holy wisdom and bear the good news of God's love to a needy world. For the world, which is already Christ's, that all its peoples may recognize their responsibility for its future and may be inspired by the message of Christmas to work together for the establishment of justice, freedom, and peace everywhere. For all in special need, the sick, the anxious, the lonely, the fearful, and the bereaved, and especially this year, those whose physical, mental, or economic well-being have been impacted by the pandemic, that the peace and light of the Christ child may bring hope and healing to all who sit in darkness. We commend all whom we love or who have asked for our prayers to the unfailing mercy of our Heavenly Father and say together as Christ himself taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ give us the joys of everlasting life, and unto the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. Amen.
How far is it to Bethlehem? Well, as the crow flies, it's a little over 6,000 miles from Roanoke to Bethlehem. But few of us will ever celebrate Christmas in Bethlehem. While some of us may celebrate Christmas in the mountains or on the beach, most of us will likely celebrate Christmas at home. For many of us, coming home for Christmas also means coming to church, whether that's for carols by candlelight, a Christmas pageant, or Christmas Eve services. Perhaps more than any other year in recent memory, the chaos of this year makes us long for the traditions of Christmas's past. But the pandemic that has caused much of the chaos means that it's not safe for us to gather in the ways that we're used to. Ritual is important. It gives us structure and comfort. And in a year when so many of our rituals are interrupted, it's easy to become overwhelmed. We're tired of finding new ways to do things. At times like this, it can be helpful to remember that just because we can't gather inside the church right now, doesn't mean that we can't hear the story of Christmas and offer our praises to God. In the bidding prayer that began this service, we heard these words. Let it be our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels, and in heart and mind go even to Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Our Christmas journey is one of heart and mind, a journey that we can make no matter our physical location.
prophet Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. The words we heard from the prophet Isaiah, Comfort ye my people, were spoken to a people in exile. The people of Israel had been conquered by Babylon and forcibly removed from their homeland. Even when the people of Israel couldn't worship in the temple in Jerusalem, Isaiah knew that God was still faithful and still working for the good of God's people. Like Isaiah, Micah also spoke to a people in exile. He prophesied that the leader to rule Israel at the end of exile would come from Bethlehem, the city of David. Micah's prophecy gave the people of Israel hope that their future ruler would come from a place they knew. Familiar places are important to us too. The house where we grew up, the college we attended, the church where we were baptized. And Bethlehem, the home of King David, yes, but also the birthplace of Jesus, the savior of the world. Bethlehem is certainly important to us. In 1865, Phillips Brooks, an Episcopal priest and later Bishop of Massachusetts, visited Bethlehem on Christmas Eve. Bishop Brooks' trip to Bethlehem would serve as the inspiration for his most famous hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem, a few years after the trip. But just a year after returning home, he reflected on the visit. I remember especially on Christmas Eve, when I was standing in the old church at Bethlehem, how again and again it seemed as if I could hear voices that I knew well, telling each other of the wonderful night of the Savior's birth. Many of us can relate to hearing the story of the wonderful night in the voices of we, those we know well. We lift our voices with them, knowing that the ageless gift of Christmas, of Jesus Christ, is not limited to any time or place. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today.
angel Gabriel appears to Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. says that Gabriel appeared to Mary in the sixth month in a town called Nazareth. While there's no indication of exactly where Gabriel's announcement took place, it seems likely that as a young unmarried woman, she would have been at home. Think about that for a moment. God's message reached Mary where she was, not in a special secret or sacred location, but at her home in a town in Galilee. God comes to us where we are too. It may be at church, but it may also be at work, in the car, or at home. In the words of the hymn we just sang, the Holy One, the living God, is always full of grace to those who seek their Maker's will in every time and place. The text of that hymn is a paraphrase of the Magnificat, the song that Mary sings in praise of the one who has chosen her to be the mother of God's Son. The words remind us that God continues to be gracious to us, regardless of who, where, or even when we are. The gift of God's grace, given human form in the baby in the manger, is for all people everywhere. O oh, come, let us adore him.
St. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
shepherds go to worship the Christ child. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you, and you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Ding dong merrily on high, in heaven the bells are ringing. Ding dong merrily the sky is filled with angels singing. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me read for you a text that I think is particularly appropriate for this evening's service, but it's also one of the least thought of texts uh, at this time of year. It's from the tail end of chapter 8 in the book of Romans, and Paul writes, what then are we to say about these things? 
If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of God in Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither let death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor pandemics, nor politicians, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We never hear that text uh, during the Christmas season, but I think that text speaks to us, well, it speaks to us all the time, but it is particularly helpful right now. We are at the darkest time of the year. Literally, it is about as dark as it's going to get. The days are about as short as they're going to be. It is dark in our world and in our lives. Anger and division, pandemic, exhaustion, frustration, it's all boiling over. And it's in the midst of this that Christ comes. Just as it was the case some 2,000 years ago when God joined humanity as a human being, there was darkness, there was persecution, there was division and rivalry and hatred and furor, and that is when God came, came to be with us, and God has not stopped being with us, has not stopped coming to us. We lift up and celebrate this season, God born in a manger. But this year, it takes on deeper meaning, more powerful, more persuasive, more, more important, maybe, in our context. Because it's in our context now where it's easy to feel lost and dark and hopeless. It's easy now to let the powers of sin and death and evil sway us. And that is why it is important, so important for us to remember that those powers do not have the last word. That the God who joins humanity in the manger, the God to whom we sing our carols and, and pray our prayers, is the God who loves us so deeply and so powerfully that God does not leave us alone, separated, abandoned. This year, more than maybe any other year, we remember and give thanks that the God that we love, that the God who is alive, that 
the God who is with us is with us bringing life and love and hope always and forever. Amen.
his name all oppression shall cease. What in the world does that have to do with the baby lying in a manger? In a word, everything. Because the story of Christmas doesn't end when the shepherds and the wise men return home. It continues through Jesus' life and death, his resurrection and ascension, and his promised return. The baby in the manger is the savior of the world, who frees us from bondage to sin and death. And this is good news for every time and place. The Gospel of John puts it a bit more poetically. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. If you have a candle nearby, I hope that you'll light it as we sing Silent Night. Maybe you want to plug in a string of lights, or just turn on the flashlight on your phone. That's okay, too. Whatever form of light you choose, may it be a reminder. No, more than a reminder, a symbol to you that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not, does not, and will never overcome it.
O God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our Judge, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and gracious God, in the birth of your Son, you made your home among us. When we long for home and normalcy, remind us that you are with us, always calling us to our true home in you. Enlighten the darkness of chaos that surrounds us, and comfort our hearts with your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take on our nature, bless you this day, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.